So there last week, thank you. Last week, Amazon announced their new cloud gaming service, Amazon mm -hmm. Luna. Hold on, why am I introducing this? This isn't my topic. <laughs> Ophelia, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I was, I'm fine with it. I'm no, like, okay, don't. that's I, right. That's right. I'm, I'm so used to being, so I usually run um, a, a two person podcast and I always introduce the topic. So I kind of fell into oh. my. I'm good um, with it. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just, okay. So I'm, Amazon announced uh, their game service, cloud gaming service, which is exclusive to the USA right now. And you know what? We're also going to put up a little B-roll while I'm talking. How about that? That's not it. Multitasking, a lot harder than... Uh, you got this. This isn't even working. It's, it keeps showing <laughs> Call of Duty for some reason. Anyways, <laughs> you guys don't get the trailer to Amazon uh, Luna. But what it is, it's an exclusive service in the USA right now. It's $5.99. I think it's like invite only. It comes with a controller that looks like a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. It's not even trying to hide that it's ripping it off. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a blend of Google Stadia and um, Xbox's Game Pass because you pay a monthly fee, but you have access to the whole library, which is different than Stadia mm -hmm. where you pay a monthly fee, but then you also have to pay for your game. Nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't understand them all. Um, you can play with an Xbox controller, with this Amazon controller, with the DualShock 4 controller, as well as with mouse and keyboard. So... Right now they're testing it out and they're probably going to be um, rolling this out worldwide after they, they hammer out some bugs. But the, the whole concept is you can play it from pretty much anywhere you want with anything you want. What do you guys think? Do we need this? Well, <laughs> they do have a point, I think. Oh, well, sorry. the Luna is different from the Stadia because, well, Google tried with the Stadia, but well, we're still waiting for lots on the Stadia. That Cure what tried. Amazon nailed yeah, but what they did good, I think Amazon's really got a shot at it because not a, you pay a monthly fee, it's like six bucks, I think. And then you get from now a hundred games, plus you can get kind of kind of like bundles, like Ubisoft games, you get bridges between other companies. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't need you to pay per game, you have everything at once. And you don't need the controller, you can use anyone you like. So if you're a PC yep. gamer, you can just bring your keyboard and mouse. If you like PlayStation, you have the DualShock. You can do whatever you want with it. And I think that's the strength of Amazon Luna because it's Amazon. They have Twitch. Uh, they're developing new game. They have Crucible. We're going to have New World coming soon. So I think they have a powerhouse to follow their promise and hopefully not end up like the Google Stadia. Yeah, I, do. I, I don't know. I, I just, the way that I look at it is at this point, anyone who's going to invest in gaming mm. has three platforms that they've been investing gaming in, or maybe four, four platforms that they've been investing gaming in for the last five, 10, 15 years. And that's PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, or PC. Uh, and I think anyone trying to get involved outside of those avenues is already fighting like a massive uphill battle in trying to win people over stadia had this really cool concept it was something that was an interesting idea and people were like wait this might be the new console or the new like gaming platform that we add in to those four consistent ones that people always play on and then it came out massive dud um, and then now there's xCloud. But the thing about xCloud is that it's tied to Microsoft. It's tied to Xbox. It's tied to those games. And mm -hmm. so it's still very much within that family. And it's something that I do see succeeding because it's under that roof. But um, with this new thing from Amazon, it's like Amazon, they, they just print money. Like they just make it hand over fist. So even if this does fail, it's probably not that big of a deal. But I just don't know how this succeeds in the current climate of games where those four platforms are the ones that dominate so much, especially when the next gen is on the way. And even on the PC side of things, they just released like the 3080, the 3090. 
Um, and th- that's huge. That's selling like crazy, selling out everywhere on pre-orders. PlayStation 5s are selling out everywhere on pre-orders. Series X, same situation. So, like, obviously, everyone's gearing up for the next gen. And so I don't know where this would fit in terms of the consumer's eyes on them wanting to invest in it in any way. I believe the the most the biggest difference between both is money because we can't all afford I said we because well afford both the PlayStation 5 plus and Xbox Series X right at launch and right. Amazon Luna is just $6 a month and it's like Netflix mm-hmm. you can even play on two devices at the same time which is huge so like you and me could be playing on one account at the mm-hmm. same time at the same mm-hmm. game wherever we are and i think that's the strength because if you want to pay back like the, you would have two years of amazon luna subscription for the price of one console not even paying for games which are 80 80 dollars now so yeah i think it has a niche where gamers will not ready to spend that much of money in next gen like you've got internet connection, but you don't have space because new consoles are massive or right. you don't have money or you just don't want to because I don't know, you're not ready yet. Mm-hmm. It's it's like Netflix. And when Amazon got Amazon Prime, nobody believed in it because we had Netflix. What else could they do? And now they're serious competitors. So I think Amazon's good at making money. And if they do that, they have something in mind. I don't think it's going to, we're going to see it being attractive or geared towards those who have been gaming traditionally, uh, to Caboose's point, you know, that there's the next gen of console and those who have been gaming on consoles or PC, they're all eyeing that or they're, they're, they're in their ecosystem that they're happy with. I think if anything, yeah. the, the Luna is going to be like a complimentary service where, you know, you're, you're playing where you want, but if something grabs your interest on Luna and you're like, oh, I can just play this game for six bucks or, hey, how about we make it part of your Amazon Prime so you have it anyways? Um, that's one way that more traditional gamers might play it. That would have might, me interested. Right? Because you're like, well, I've got it anyways. Yeah. Let's, let's see yeah. what's going mm-hmm. on here. And I think that can also bring more of the fringe gamers, if you will, like people who like to pick up a controller from one, like let's say those who play maybe five to 10 hours a month, this service might be more appealing to them. There's also, if I read correctly, they have the unique take where Apple is letting them operate on their platform which not really not really they don't let them there actually it's going to be a web app so if you have a brother you can access amazon luna and oh. apple's blocking apps on the app store not they're not blocking web apps okay so, so it's a workaround. if you have safari you can run it so why can't uh could theoretically x cloud or stadia do that then to get onto yes. Apple devices? Oh, okay. So. Yes, there, there were some emulations of Stadia on an iPad. I've seen a video coming around. And yeah, Xbox should do that too. But anyways, that's one way of bypassing Apple's uh, Apple's regulations. I like what uh, Smart OG says in the chat. It says, I feel like it's a missed opportunity to not tie the Luna service with Prime subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe maybe, maybe they will. Yeah. Well, I think we're I mean, eventually. I think we're in the infancy of, of cloud gaming, and we're seeing a lot of missed opportunities. And I think it's because everyone's kind of trying to figure it out. All these big players are trying to pivot into gaming in very new, unique ways. For example, Google Stadia just had its biggest opportunity ever in 2020, which, in my opinion, so we're in a year where gaming trade shows cannot operate. Like gaming trade shows from across the world have been shut down, and there's no way for players or media to try games unless there's a demo on Steam or something. And one of Stadia's main feature was like, hey, you can watch a trailer on YouTube, and at the end of the trailer, you click a button and you can play a demo instantly. That was one of their selling points. Now imagine if that was available right now in 2020 and around E3 or PAX, uh, those mm-hmm. accounts just release 20 trailers of new games and the demo's right there because it's powered by Stadia. It would completely have changed the conversation around Google Stadia. People would have went from, yep. oh, this service smells to, oh, we need this, it's good. And it <laughs> cemented them to need it in 2020 because then they were like, wait, I can give Google, <clears throat> I don't know, a thousand bucks to showcase my game through my trailer to millions of people or I can pay you know, tens of thousands of dollars to have a booth at a trade show where maybe like one 
popular journalists will pick me up and, and give me the visibility I need. And yeah. it's like, what are you doing, Stadia? What are, what are you doing, Google? How can, how can you not see that opportunity? I, I'm really surprised how, like, miserably <laughs> Stadia failed, especially with Google being at the helm. It's like, you'd think of all the people, of all the companies, mm -hmm. corporations in the world, they'd be the one who understand marketing the most. Mm -hmm. And they just they completely missed the mark with Stadia. And they know and it. It just, it doesn't work. Because look how quiet they've been this year. They must know it, or they're just really in a bad place. Yeah, yeah but the, 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 same, the same same situation with Stadia is is like like I said with Amazon. You know, like Google, they just make money hand over fist. They they have they can afford to send this out and for it to just fail as bad as it did because, like, whatever. You know, it's it's an idea. If I I feel like for them, it's this idea where. Okay, if it works, great. Another successful thing under our belt. If it doesn't, oh well, we have 10 other successful things under our belt yeah. that are still successful, you know? We're friggin' Google. So the, they like it's okay for them. And I feel it's the same situation with this thing from Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I kind of agree with you, but I don't think Google and Amazon see things the same way because Amazon's trying to be top notch and include everything at once. Yeah. First, they had books, then they had more stuff, then they had Prime, now gaming, and the gaining grounds. I think they like one day or another, we're going to have currency, which is Amazon currency, because it's worldwide and they cover everything. Google, on the other side, I'm not sure I'm such marketing genius. I'm not going to make friends with that, but Google Plus was a big fail. Um, YouTube Premium was buying that. They had to put ads and ads and ads just to make you <laughs> beg to them to stop so you could purchase it. Yeah. So is the Stadia failing such a surprise? I'm not sure because besides Google, Google Maps, I mean, the core activities, Drive, etc. I don't see them succeed in anything outside of their niche market. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you make you make good points for sure. I I would like to see this succeed because it is pretty cheap. Like this yeah. is a really the cheap service, and yeah, and it's mm -hmm. like and it's and it, it it looks solid. I just again, I just don't know how many people are gonna want to step out of the comfort zone and try something new rather mm -hmm. than just stick with the thing that they know works. But I think right. they Jayden have... Jaden right with casual players, I think. I do think they have the right pieces. Amazon, as, as a company, it's just a matter of... So, so you know, you say they don't have the, the brand, but they have Twitch. And if they can play Twitch into this package in an interesting way, like we already have Twitch Prime, um, and you can yeah. get like exclusive loot for, for whatever game you play and stuff like that. Um, now think about ways that you can tie in game offerings with Twitch oh. Prime and that's right now they have no exclusive games on Amazon Luna. And that's what people are mm -hmm. saying. Uh, like, why would I go here? There all, all these games I can get everywhere else. But when you start bundling in unique features with Twitch, then you're starting to get a little bit more appetite. And then you start bundling that with Amazon Prime. You're like, okay, so it's no cost to me. I'm already streaming this on Twitch or I want to stream yep. this with my friends. Okay, now I get all this extra little perks. Okay, I'll just, I'll just use it. And that's how they can increase their user base to millions yeah. overnight. Yeah, and even I think it blends because we've got Amazon all over the place. You've got Alexa's controlling stuff. You got the Fire Stick <laughs> on your on your TV. Like, just imagine if you say, "Okay, Alexa, I'll just launch this," and it launched the Fire Stick with Amazon Luna. It brought the best game you could ask for. I mean, I don't think it would be like a competitor to Xbox or PlayStation because you won't change gamers. Like. They were fighting over PlayStation versus Xbox before we even have the specs. So yeah. you're not going to get those. But I don't know, families or students or you just want to chill instead of playing Candy Crush on your mobile. You could just, I don't know, bring up the, the Luna. Mm -hmm. And Amazon's everywhere. So I wouldn't be surprised. Alex, I think you were interested in cloud services after... Uh the last few conversations with xCloud and Stadio, mm -hmm. do you still feel interested in this? And is Luna like, oh, another choice? Like what's your perspective? Uh, well, I mean, 
It's probably going to be like how Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max and Disney Plus, you know, it's like literally all these things like I before like all these stuff blow up, blew up. I thought like uh, I'm probably never I don't even think I would do Spotify, but yeah. like here, here I am now. <laughs> I have a Spotify, Netflix, a Crunchyroll, uh, HBO Max, a freaking Hulu, Disney and Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. <laughs> like I, I literally have all these things because of all the small different like uh shows or exclusives on them and it's probably gonna be the same thing and especially if luna is like so cheap mm -hmm. i feel like i mean i feel like just that alone is people will be like okay sure i'll consider it and then the, when they launch they probably will launch like a twitch prime or amazon prime like special thing where like oh maybe one of these drops is like a free month of luna so you can try it out mm -hmm. and it's probably gonna work like that yeah yeah, so I could totally see it working, but I agree. I don't think it's going to be like a direct competitor, although I'm being kind of hypocritical because like all, all the weeks before I said that Stadia and like cloud gaming in general is kind of what they want gaming to become. But I think but Stadia I, is but... definitely killing themselves because they're charging you to access it, but then they're charging you for the game as well. And no one else yeah. is okay, doing that. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, while a lot of people called Stadia the Netflix of gaming, I think that was an incorrect label that went to Google's favor. But now that all mm -hmm. the other players are coming up and it's like, oh, no, 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 this is the real Netflix for games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think Stadia is just going to get buried soon. Yeah, but until they have originals, like the Netflix originals, oh, I don't true. think anyone could be Netflix of something. Well, you can't be the Netflix without originals. And that'll be interesting to see if we are going to see some original IPs for these streaming services. We will. There's going to be new words, which is uh, MMO, I think, coming in 2021. Amazon's developing games. They have oh, crucibles yeah. on the way. They have new words coming. Yeah, they have enough money so to buy will whatever they probably. want to. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid, maybe. There you go. We're going to see Konami <laughs> on Amazon Luna. That's where uh, uh, Hideo Kojima went to yeah. Amazon. Into the cloud. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 he's gonna make a game with them that's why he made death stranding which is a oh, game it was just a, all connected. <laughs> it was just a big pitch of like this could be the future of amazon <laughs> that makes so much sense i can't even really <laughs> laugh at it because that's <laughs> perfect it's really a good Alex emotional piece. The code. Yeah. yeah the konami code mm. do you know it by heart <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> it's okay. I, I don't think I do either. Do you? Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. But that's the BA. BA is it BA start? Mm hmm. Okay. I always yeah. get confused with the BA. It yeah, was, yeah. It was critical for Ninja Ninja Turtles 2. I think it was a level select in that one. That's where I used it a lot. Oh. Yeah. The arcade, Teenage, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. I loved, I loved those. I love the arcade games for the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. I like you really walk good. around and. I gotta, I gotta mod my. I have like one of those arcade one ups for Mortal oh, yeah. Kombat. I wanna like, I wanna mod it and just get a bunch of arcade games in there. You, make you know, video? Caboose mods. NBA Jam, Marvel vs. Capcom, all those. You know. Yeah, The Simpsons, The Simpsons arcade. Yes. Oh wow. I really like that one. <laughs> so many quarters. Some of the WWE ones. Oh man. Yeah. The beat 'em ups. All right. Well, that takes us to the end of our squadcast here. But uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, sharing your thoughts with these four wonderful topics and these four wonderful hosts today. See what I did there. Uh, but before we sign off, where can everyone find more information either on what you're working on this week um, or what's coming up? Let's start with uh, you, Caboose. What's, what's going on in your world this week? Just still doing the streaming thing, still doing the content creation thing. Uh, there's, again, heavy rumors of new Mortal Kombat DLC coming. So just kind of on standby, looking to see what Ed Boon is going to tease next in regards to that. Uh, and then I'm just waiting for next gen. I want to play <laughs> Spider-Man. I want to I want to play like... I saw the I puddles see were you. bigger in Spider-Man yeah. PS5. Oh, wow. You know, new ray tracing. I want to see what the remasters are going to look like on PS5, although they're starting to become... There's a, a little more controversy in regards to these, uh, these PS5 upgrades mm -hmm. now than there were before. Well, maybe we'll say that for a topic next week. But 
just doing all that fun stuff. You can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK, twitch.tv slash Caboose, youtube.com slash Caboose. Very cool. Alex, what's uh, in the rad puppy world this week? Um, I'm just streaming, attempting to do daily streams. I keep getting to like two two streams in a row, and then I'm like, I'm tired. You gotta you got <laughs> you got have some room to reset. Streaming is draining. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, you can find me at twitch.tv slash radpuppy. All my socials are at feelsradman. Um, I'm pretty active on like Twitter and Instagram. So yeah, that's where you can find Wait, me. Wait, did you say your socials nice. are feelsradman? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I put the wrong social on your Oh, overlay. that's okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, radpuppy is like my Twitch name. So I, I figured that. Oh, like, that, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good, good to clear <laughs> that up. <laughs> No worries. Uh, hopefully, anything fun coming from you over on Squat State or anywhere else that you create content, really? Well, actually, it's a busy week for video games. Yeah. Um, this week, I'm going to write about some GRPGs, so Japanese RPGs, mainly on Switch and others. And yeah, more fun stuff to come, but I'm not seizing more. <laughs> All right. So do you, maybe uh, an interview with Among Us developers, but it's in the works. Oh, that would be cool. And we can find that all at squadstate.com. Yes, and on news, my Twitter. For your gaming news and guides. Yep. Very cool. And as for me, I'm not just the guy behind the camera. I also have a little side thing going with my HeyJ brand. You can find me everywhere uh, on socials, HeyJ Official. I also put up a few videos on YouTube talking about the latest games I played. I tend to lean more into Nintendo stuff, but I do play PS4 and I play everywhere. I'm, I'm going through Ghost of Tsushima right now, which I need to yes. nerd out with Caboose mm -hmm. one day on. Yes. And just <laughs> that game's so good. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. We wish you all a great week. Thanks for joining us. And uh, until next time, take care. Bye. Yep.